Europe produces some of the most advanced artillery systems in the world, each with a different philosophy, doctrine and a price tag. Some prioritise speed, others firepower, some automation and others survival. Today we're breaking down the European made systems and comparing them to see how Europe's armies actually fight. This is Eurodefence. Let's begin. Starting off with the French made Caesar. It is a 17 ton, 155mm, 52 calibre wheeled gun built around France's priority, strategic mobility. It fires fast, moves even faster and delivers long range effects without the weight or complexity of heavier systems. It is currently operational with France, Estonia and Ukraine. Previously also Denmark, but they donated all of theirs to Ukraine. It is also on order for Belgium, Croatia, Czechia, Lithuania and Slovenia. Its frontline performance in Ukraine has driven demand across Europe. For firepower, it has 18 ready rounds and a max rate of fire being 6 shells per minute. Caesar delivers a strong opening minute, but its lighter frame limits how long it can hold high tempo fire before accuracy and barrel life start to drop. Into action, it's around 60 seconds and out of action in around 40 seconds. The wheeled chassis gives it exceptional road range and rapid displacement, but protection is minimal. It survives by moving, not by tanking hits. Its truck chassis simplifies maintenance but the bottleneck is barrel and recoil system production, where next at the company which produces these still scales slowly. At 3 to 5 million euros per gun, it remains one of Europe's most cost efficient systems. Caesar is built for high mobility, dispersed operations and rapid deployment, especially where air transport matters. It's less suited to long duration fire missions or high intensity artillery duels where protection and automation dominate. Its unique trait being air transportable and speed. The only major European 155mm system that can be moved this easily by air thanks to its sub 18 ton weight. The Panzer Haubitzer 2000 is a 55 ton tracked armoured 155mm L52 system built for high intensity divisional artillery. Based on Leopard 2 design principles, it stands at the top end of Europe's capability spectrum. Heavy, resilient and engineered for sustained precise fire. Operated by Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, Greece, Lithuania, Hungary, Croatia and Ukraine. Its wide adoption reflects proven battlefield output rather than just industrial influence. The opening minute is one of the most lethal in Europe. That tempo, however, drives heat and barrel wear, as well as MRSI capability, which lets the gun fire multiple rounds at different angles so they all hit the target simultaneously. For mobility and survivability, into action is around 60 seconds, but the placement after MRSI is around 2 minutes. The armoured track design allows operations closer to the front than any wheeled gun. It's resistant to fragmentation, drone strikes and blast effects, and provides a stable firing base on rough ground. The trade-off is strategic mobility. Moving a 55-ton system requires dedicated heavy transport and planning. Germany maintains production and refurbishment lines, but output remains slow due to complex subcontractor networks and political bottlenecks. New builds currently run 15 to 18 million euros per unit, reflecting the platform's complexity and limited throughput. The Panzer Haubitzer is Europe's reference system for high intensity, sustained fire artillery. It excels in endurance, stability and protected fire missions. In terms of sustainment and accuracy, this is where the system dominates. The heavy chassis absorbs recoil, the long barrel maintains velocity under heat and accuracy holds through long fire missions. No wheeled system matches its endurance in counter battery engagements or continuous support. Its weaknesses are the predictable ones, weight, maintenance, load and demanding logistics. Armies planning for attritional warfare value it, mobility focused forces often look elsewhere. Its unique trait is a deep magazine and full auto load endurance. It holds 60 ready rounds, the largest in Europe and two crew members can reload the entire magazine in under 12 minutes. Zuzana 2 is a 31 ton, 155mm 52 calibre wheeled system on a Tatra 8x8 chassis with a fully enclosed armoured turret. It sits right in the middle of Europe's artillery spectrum offering stronger protection than the lighter wheeled guns while staying fast and mobile. It's operated by Slovakia, Cyprus and Ukraine. Earlier variants also served Greece, giving the platform a solid operational history. Militaries value it as a dependable, balanced system, rather than a high-end outlier. It has 40 ready rounds, split into two 20-round auto-loaded magazines. Its sustained tempo is 6 rounds per minute, burst rate 7 to 8 rounds per minute, first two minutes 12 to 15 rounds per minute. This twin magazine autoloader keeps the opening cycle smooth and controlled. In terms of mobility and survivability, it's ready to fire in under 60 seconds. The armoured turret and cabin provide the strongest protection of any European wheeled system. 
The 8x8 chassis allows quick repositioning and reliable shoot and scoot tactics. Unit cost sits around 5.5 to 7.5 million euros. Slovakia can support existing users but doesn't have the depth for major wartime surges or large export expansions. Susanna 2 is Europe's most well-rounded wheeled artillery platform. The mechanical autoloader spreads the workload and heat effectively, giving it meaningful endurance without the weight of track platforms. Barrel wear is moderate and maintenance is manageable. It balances performance and sustainability, neither overly maintenance light nor demanding. Its unique trait is its full 360 degree turret traverse. Unlike most wheeled guns with the restricted firing arcs, Zuzana 2 can engage targets in any direction without repositioning. The Swedish Archer is a 34 ton, fully automated 155mm system mounted on a 6x6 articulated hauler. The crew stay inside an armoured cabin while the gun loads, lays and fires automatically. Built for harsh Nordic terrain, it moves confidently on difficult ground. It's operated by Sweden, the UK and Ukraine, with Latvia set to join next. British procurement has pushed production forward and strengthened international confidence in the platform. In terms of firepower, it has 21 ready rounds. Its burst rate is 8 to 9 rounds per minute, and it has a fully automated MRSI capability. Archer delivers one of the fastest, most precise opening minutes in Europe, optimized for synchronized multi-round impact. Its sustained tempo is fairly moderate. Archer is engineered for rapid, high-precision strikes rather than prolonged bombardment. Thermal limits require pauses in long engagements, reinforcing a doctrine built around fast attacks and immediate displacement. For mobility and survivability, it's into action in under 30 seconds, and out of action also in under 30 seconds. Archer sets the standard for survivability through speed. The crew never leaves the vehicle and the system moves so quickly after firing that counter-battery radars struggle to track it. UK orders have expanded output, but the automation complexity raises costs. It's around 10 million euros per gun. Future growth depends on wider European participation. Computer-controlled firing keeps barrel stress low and extends service life compared to manually loaded guns. The main constraint is industrial capacity. Sweden's production base for barrels and automated components is limited, making large-scale sustainment dependent on multinational investment. Archer is Europe's leading automation-centric artillery system. It delivers elite burst firepower, first-rate crew protection and exceptional survivability, especially suited for forces expecting to operate outnumbered or under continuous sensor pressure. Its main limitations are industrial, not tactical. Its unique trait is fully automated cabin operation. Every task, deployment, firing, reloading the magazine and displacement happens without any crew exposure. Up next is the Polish Crab. It's a 48-ton tracked, 155mm, 52 caliber system built on a K9 Thunder chassis with a British AS-90M turret, upgraded by Poland with modern fire control electronics. This hybrid design creates a stable firing platform with strong protection and the endurance needed for high-intensity combat. It's fielded by Poland and Ukraine. Ukrainian crews consistently highlight its stability, accuracy and reliability under sustained fire. Poland is now expanding production to meet increasing domestic and Ukrainian demand. Its ready rounds is 40 in total, 29 in the turret and 11 in the hull. In terms of burst rate, it's around 6 rounds per minute. The semi-automatic loader lets train crews deliver fast, accurate opening salvos suited for counter-battery missions. Its sustained rate of fire is 2 rounds per minute. Mobility and survivability, first round from halt is about 30 seconds and volley and displace is under 2 minutes. The track chassis and armoured protection allow it to operate close to the line while resisting fragmentation, drone threats and counter-battery effects. Its mobility and protection sit just below the Panzer Haubitze but ahead of all wheeled platforms. And unit cost is around 9 to 11 million euros. And production is scaling at a pace few Western European programs can match. Wartime sustainability is one of the Crab's defining strengths. Crab is the industrial and operational pragmatist of Europe's tracked artillery. It delivers dependable performance, strong protection and rapidly growing supply chains well suited for long attritional campaigns where availability and sustainment matter just as much as peak performance. Its unique trait is the hybrid NATO-Korean design. The combination of the AS-90 turret and K9 chassis provide a rare mix of Western fire control sophistication with proven Korean mobility and durability. The RCH-155 is Europe's most ambitious move towards fully automated mobile artillery. It combines high automation, fast reaction times and minimal crew requirements into a package they could reshape how European forces think about survivability and tempo. The entire system is engineered for continuous movement, rapid fire initiation and minimal crew exposure, delivering a level of agility traditional self-propelled guns can't match. 
the UK is already buying it, and Germany, Italy and the Netherlands are still evaluating the platform. Germany built the RCH-155 around one core idea, automation as a force multiplier. Despite strong interest, the RCH-155 has not been tested in combat, and its full capability set is still being verified. A 30-round automated magazine feeds the gun, backed by a modular charge system with up to 144 charges. Automation keeps sustained fire at around 8 rounds per minute without relying on crew stamina or slowing down over long missions. If real-world performance matches the design, it provides the consistency needed for counter-battery duels and deep strike missions, though this still lacks battlefield confirmation. Mobility and survivability. This is its standout characteristic. It reaches firing readiness in under 30 seconds, fires a burst and relocates inside one minute. No stabilizers, no crew stepping outside, no loss of mobility. Emplacement takes roughly 15 to 20 seconds, giving it a significant survivability advantage in modern counter-battery conditions. At 10 to 14 million euros per unit, it sits in the premium tier. Germany and the UK are still building the production and sustainment pipeline, and the system has never been tested under wartime supply pressure, leaving long-term scalability uncertain. For now, it stands as a next decade solution rather than a mature frontline system. Its unique trait is true fire on the move capability. It can receive a fire mission, engage while moving and stay mobile for the entire sequence. No other Western system matches this profile, giving it exceptional protection against counter-battery fire. Now that we have gone through each one, here is how they look once comparing their basic traits. However, there is no best artillery system. Each nation decides based on their own doctrine and geography. What system does your country use? And do you think it's the right choice? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.